everyone, welcome back to Informational Vlog. Today's topic is a bit heavy, but super important topic then. So can you stick with us for the next 15 minutes as we unpack what it is, what is matters, and how it affects our daily lives. As you can see, we're on Friday, Isabella's Day University, Hawaiian Campus. And before we start to discuss what is public debt, we're going to find five lucky students to ask what is public debt. Let's go! Pagkakalang <laughs> Um, one out of ten. Oh. Say, sir, po. Three out of ten. Three out of ten. Pero baka alam nila yan, guys. So, tatanungin ko po kayo. Ano po ang public debt? Public. Para po sa akin, eh, utang ng Pilipinas na sa ibang bansa. Kasi po may din. Eh, kayo. Saka pabrik po. Oo nga. Which is yung uh, utang natin na dapat ay uh, kailangan natin itong bayaran ng buo and para maging, uh, upang sa ganun ay maging maundad naman kay Tapano Katin. May point siya. Thank you po, sir. Thank you po. So, tapos tayo sa second and third person ng ating interview. So, let's go for fourth one. So, hello ate. Good morning. Pwede po ba kayong ma-interview? Sige po. So, ano pong pangalan nyo? Catherine Padua po. Okay. So, kung i-rate nyo po yung knowledge nyo about public debt from 1 to 10 po? Siguro na sa 4 over 10. Hmm, patanayan natin yan. familiar yung eh, Okay. So, ano po ang public debt? Puntang ng Pilipinas, parang something na ganun. Hmm, sige po. Thank you po. Yan, natapos na po tayo sa pang-apat. Lipat na po tayo sa pang-last. Let's go. Ate, good morning po. Pwede po ba kayong ma-interview? Okay lang na. So, ano pong pangalan nyo? Si Edsel Ann Kamad. Kamad. Insel tayo. Kaya nga, kamag-alak natin sa mga. So, kung i-rate nyo po yung knowledge nyo about um, public debt from 1 to 10 po? 5 over 10. Okay, 5, 5 over 10. 10. Sige, patunayan natin. Ano po ang public debt? Um, para sa akin is... Utang ng Pilipinas. Mm, utang ng Pilipinas. Mm. Okay. okay. Thank you po. Thank you po. Ngayon lang tapos na natin ang five black students na tinanong natin. Ano nga ba ang public debt? Public debt refers to the amounts owned in different levels of government and used to finance public diseases resulting from higher level of program spending to budgeted income. Meaning, it is the total amount of money that is owned to the public by the government to meet development funds. In public finance, it is also known as public interest, government debt, national debt, and sovereign debt. Public debt can be categorized in several ways such as maturity, short term, less than one year, medium term, one to ten years, and long term, over ten years. Fixed versus variable interest, whether the interest rate remains constant or fluctuates. Currency, denominated in domestic, foreign currency. But how can we measure public debt? One of the most common ways to measure public debt is to compare it to the gross domestic product of a country, which is the total value of all the goods and services produced in a year. The debt-to-GDP ratio tells you how large the public debt is relative to the size of the economy. Why do our government need to borrow money that leads to public debt? 
public debt plays a complex role in public finance. It can be useful to for financing essential investment like infrastructure, education, healthcare, and more. Responding to crises, economic downturns, natural disasters, and more. Smoothing out economic fluctuations by counteracting recessions and managing budget cycles. However, excessive public debt can have a negative consequences. High interest payments. It consumes a significant portion of government revenue, limiting the resources of other spending. For we all know, the higher the interest rate, the more expensive your debt is like over the time. And the longer it may take you to pay down what you owe. Economic stability, a stage in which the economy is going through a recession or unhealthy expansion associated with increase in the price level, sudden increases in debt can trigger crisis. Intergenerational burden, future generations face higher taxes to repay past debts. Public debt will have consequences, but can government manage public debt? Yes, by balancing the risks and benefits of the public debt is a key challenge for governments. They employ various strategies for managing it, including fiscal discipline, controlling the spending and re raising revenue efficiently, debt restructuring, extending the maturities, lowering the interest rates, or changing the type of loan, and economic growth, expanding the the economy can increase revenue and make debt servicing easier. Champion ako sa amin eh. Anyway, as a citizen, we're not just spectators. We play a, a role in shaping our economic landscape. Let's talk about what we are, what we can do from staying informed to advocating for responding fiscal policies. That's all for today. And thank you for tuning in. And you found this information valuable? Give it a thumbs up. Share with your friends and hit the subscribe button for more informational content. And remember, knowledge is a power, and together we can navigate the complexities of our world. So until next time, stay curious. Bye. of Treasury says the national government's outstanding debt is at 14.10 trillion pesos as of May 2023. According to the Treasury, the level of debt grew by 185.40 billion pesos or 1.3% from April 2023. Out of the total debt, 32% is external and 68% is domestic. According to the BTR, the domestic debt is 9.59 billion pesos, which is 130.67 billion pesos or 1.4% higher than April. 
Meanwhile, external debt amounted to 4.51 trillion pesos in the same month, which was 54.73 billion or 1.2% higher than the month prior. The Bureau says the Philippine peso's depreciation against the U.S. dollar is a factor in the increase in the total money owed by the government. Kenya's national debt is once again staring at its highest limits, standing at a total of $70.75 billion when the financial year ended June 30th. Kenya's appetite for loans has been worrying to the global financial institutions, rising by a record $10.8 billion. The Treasury said Wednesday that the increase in the public debt is attributed to external loan disbursements, exchange rate fluctuations, and the uptake of domestic and external debt. Loan repayment costs mainly to China, have shot up as the local currency trades at record lows of around 144 shillings to the dollar. The cost of debt servicing in the year ended June was $2.7 billion, of which the highest payment of $743 million went to China. The debt load has prompted warnings from global credit ratings agency, including the Fitch ratings, which last month downgraded Kenya's ability to repay international lenders from stable to negative, citing tax hikes and social unrest. Inflation in Kenya has also remained stubbornly high at an annual rate of 7.3% last month. Total debt has reached an unwanted landmark, passing two trillion pounds for the first time. Here we can see it climbing over the last couple of decades, rising following the financial crisis and passing two trillion in July as government borrowing for the financial year to date rose to 150 billion pounds. That's three times last year's total in just four months. Debt has soared as a percentage of GDP too, passing 100% last month. For the first time, the UK owes more than it earns in a year. Treasury bonds, notes and bills. When the government borrows money, it does that by issuing a bond, which is a piece of paper that either says, I owe you this much money in the future, or I'm going to pay you interest at these particular time horizons and then pay you back the full amount at some other time in the future. Government is giving us the ability to trade in some of the dollars that it has supplied for a different kind of U.S. dollar called a government security. The U.S. dollar represents the reserve currency for the world, so lots of people want to own our treasuries. Treasury debt is considered an extraordinarily safe, secure asset, and somebody who's looking for a safe, secure asset would naturally be attracted to buy U.S. government bonds. So public debt has always been used for emergencies. It's easier to finance by borrowing than to burden the current generation with taxes. We saw debt rise uh, dramatically in the late 2000s after the global financial crisis, and we saw debt rise again during COVID. The debt, in some ways, is a contingency plan that we use to smooth out otherwise what would be big shocks to our economy. The problem is that we keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing day in and day out. So we're not borrowing for emergencies, we're not borrowing for only for long-term investments, we're borrowing for immediate consumption. And any borrower, whether that's a person or a business or a government, if you borrow for immediate consumption with no long-term benefit, you're actually deteriorating your financial or fiscal future over the long run.